On June 12, 2016, a glacier near Mount Everest, Nepal suddenly burst open, spilling two million cubic meters of water down the Kumbu Valley towards the village of Chukung, lying directly in its path. Luckily, just before the flood, a local group, the Kumbu Alpine Conservation Council, had reinforced Chukung with protective walls. They were responding to years of research and local engagement led by the nonprofit organization, the Mountain Institute. Despite severe flooding and destruction, the village was saved. But at first, locals worried the flood had come from a much larger and more dangerous source, one that posed a threat to the entire region. For years, scientists had been warning that the Imja Glacial Lake, containing 80 million cubic meters of water, might burst, with catastrophic consequences for agriculture, infrastructure, and human life downstream. One of my friends here is from Dingboche, Mingma Sherpa. He just called me that Imja is Imja is going to cross because there was a very loud sound of the rivers falling down. So we just ran away from Namchu Bazaar to the helipad. The flood experienced by Chukung had not come from Imja, but from pockets of meltwater trapped in the nearby Lhotse Glacier, part of the fourth highest mountain in the world. As summer temperatures rose, the water pockets inside the glacier were suddenly released. The Lhotse flood was a sign that the threat from Imja was growing, and with it, the danger of a vastly more destructive flood. With the Imja Glacier melting away due to climate change, the lake expands and is now over a square kilometer in size. We have observed in the past that many glacier lakes have formed and, and uh, grew pretty rapidly. In total, I think Nepal experienced somewhere around 24 to 30 glacier lake outburst floods. In 1985, the nearby Dig Cho Lake burst killing five people and destroying a hydropower project downstream. And in the Peruvian Andes, a glacial lake outburst flood in 1941 claimed nearly 2,000 lives in the city of Huaraz. Imja Lake is situated directly above the Kumbu Valley. Best known for Mount Everest, it is an essential site for Nepal's tourism economy, as well as home to a unique ecosystem and indigenous Sherpa culture, all of it threatened by a potential flood from the lake above. This growing danger has inspired an international effort to understand and manage the risk. Begun by Japanese scientists in the 1980s, the collaboration soon involved scientists from around the world. In 2011, the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, supported the creation of a global collaboration, the High Mountain Adaptation Partnership. Glacier scientists from around the world set out to Imja Lake to look for risk management solutions and meet with local community members. South Asian scientists then traveled to Peru to gain insight from Peru's 50 years of experience in controlling dangerous Andean glacial lakes. But upon returning to Imja, scientists were amazed to discover that the Imja lake was expanding by as much as 70 meters per year as the glacier melted away. Like this. this is just three months. This is massive. New studies were conducted, bathymetry to determine the lake's depth and volume, ground penetrating radar to determine the makeup of the moraine, the earth and ice dam that holds back the lake water, and electroresistivity to determine seepage paths within the moraine. In 2014, USAID supported a community outreach program to educate local people about climate change risks and gain insight into how to manage the problem. Drawing on this local perspective, in 2016, the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP, funded an effort to reduce the risk from Imja Lake by draining out some of its water. But draining a lake in one of the highest valleys on Earth would prove to be no easy task. It would be the first project of its kind at such an altitude, 5,000 meters, or 16,500 feet above sea level. In fact, when the government of Nepal held a bidding process for construction contractors, no one would even take the job. Nobody wanted to take that risk, so there was no tender actually. <laughs> Sorry to say, and they tried twice, and then finally, uh, Nepal government decided to give this project to the Nepal army. Alongside the Nepalese army, geomorphologist Dhananjay Rejmi led the construction effort, and almost immediately was faced with unique challenges. It is the world first such project at that altitude. So nobody was sure, even if we take an excavator or any machines up there, are they really going to work? So because the, there is no red road access there, we did all from the helicopters, delivering construction materials, manpower. The carrying capacity of those helicopters at 5,000 meters was about 1,000 kilograms. 
So we had to dismantle all these uh, equipment into pieces and then airlift. The project had to be completed by October in just six months, or freezing temperatures would make further work impossible. To make matters worse, the work would happen during the summer monsoon, creating difficult weather conditions. You have a lot of rain and you know bad weather conditions. So every day, every hour was a very, very important and precious to us. 150 construction workers, as well as army personnel, were assigned to the project. Workers would have to rotate periodically down to lower altitudes to avoid acute mountain sickness. The plan was to dig a 45-meter canal to lower the lake by 3.4 meters, or about 10 feet. Finally, just before the winter cold set in, the project was complete. Finally, the work has done, and we are very thankful to uh, DHM, USAID, UNDV, and Bananju Rigmi Halter Bias for all the support to hear the locals' voice. Nepal Army has done a very grateful job. This project gives a very clear example that Nepali people, they are not only good for the climbing the mountains, they are really good scientists, they are really good engineers, and they are capable of solving the very complex problems. Climate change is a really a very serious issue and uh, it is not an issue for one country or another country. This is a global problem and global issue and we need to tackle it uh, combinedly, jointly. Uh, we learn a lot from the Peruvian people and now I think we also did something good that we can teach the world also how to tackle these problems. So I think it's a very good, good give and take. This uh, IMSA sets example for many other projects in Nepal and in the region to reduce the risks, to save lives and save properties in the mountains.